Okay, I'm going to play two versions of it. Ready, Chris? And otherwise, I know a man. As I said to my friend, because I am always talking, John, I said, which was not his name, the darkness surrounds us. What can we do against it, or else shall we? And why not buy a goddamn big car drive, he said, for Christ's sake, look out where you're going. <laughs> Actually, I'll only play that one because that's the Harvard recording and you have the laughter. What I'm going to do is, and I want everybody to, to be really brief, you're putting one thing into, into play, one point into play briefly. I'm going to invite everybody to do it. So, um, Jason, one thing, throw one thing. What should people know that's inside Jason's head about this amazing poem? Why is this with the beats? Yeah, why is this with the beats? Fantastic. Lily? Um, I would caution against a symbolic reading of the uh, at first because they're it's very sparse words, but I've seen a lot of symbolic readings that good. are kind of confused. That's good. Mm -hmm. Symbolic readings are a real temptation, particularly because the name is John and mm -hmm. because, et cetera. Mary, I um I find the I find the line breaks absolutely amazing. And, line breaks and just even the broken word surrounds sir mm -hmm. rounds. surrounds. Okay, good. Carlos, one thing. Uh, mine's a question. Why the um, shortening of said and your? Okay. The use of SD and YR. So it's texting before time, before it's time, possibly, as, as has been said. Okay. Erica Kaufman, one thing about I know a man? I'd second the line breaks. Yeah, line breaks, good. Emily, I know a man? Uh, I would talk about narrative and what's the deal with this car that's there and not there. Um, what's the first thing you said? I didn't catch the noun. Uh, narrative. Narrative. Okay, cool. Great. Max, one thing? Uh, I would, uh, yes, underscore the, the shortening of said and why that word and why it gets sort of telegraphed or uh, shorthanded. Excellent. And Molly? I would talk about the title. The title, I Know a Man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, and Anna, strong thought on this? We're having some kind of connectivity issues with the phone, oh. so whoever's trying to call in, I'm sorry. We're <laughs> okay. It may be the. It may not be us. It may just be a problem with Maybe the call. Maybe a problem with okay. the phone, but keep trying. Okay. That that's not an I know I know a man comment, but that's fine because you. It's not not one. Okay. It's it's not it's not not. <laughs> okay. All right. What we're gonna do uh, is talk about the darkness. There. I want darkness. What I want. What I'm gonna ask each of us to do. We rarely do this, right? Because we have a limited amount of time in a in a. Uh, in a webcast, but what I'm going to ask you to do is respond briefly as we go around again to your own question or theme. But before we do that, I want everybody within a mic, within a near a microphone, everyone, to try to perform this poem. And I don't want to make a joke out of this, but I want you not so much to imitate Bob Creeley and his amazing Massachusetts accent. Western Massachusetts accent. I don't want you necessarily to imitate the quavering of the voice, although I will try to do that because I think it's so important. What I want us to do is together and different and distinctly to manage the lineation in the performance because we recommend to every Mod Pope person everywhere in the world that in order to really get this poem, you have to actually be able to say to someone else, preferably when you're driving a car, or when you're in a, pa a passenger in someone else's car, to create the sense of urgency of the performance. So we'll, on the count of three, we're all going to perform it, and then we're going to go back to Jason and start around for some answers about I Know a Man. Okay, don't forget to include the title with respect to Molly's point. So here we go. One, two, three. I Know, I know a Man. man. As, As I, I said, said to my friend, friend because I am always talking, John, John, John I said, said it's not, it's not his so name, the darkness surrounds us. What do we do against it? Or else shall we and why not buy a goddamn big car? Right, he said, for Christ's sake, look out where you're going. You know what? I'm going to have. Uh, Zach extract that audio and we're going to add it to the mod post syllabus. Okay, Jason, really quickly add something in response to the issue you raised. I think the part is I am always talking. Um, not me, which sometimes I am, but that 
Creeley is in the condensation is there is a sense of an ongoingness perhaps that that ties him in to the long lines of the beats that we'd expect. Interesting. You're, you've asked the most complicated question and my answer to your question would be it doesn't really belong but I think thematically he's countering or dealing with the beat phenomenon of the long drive which supposedly has a lot of meaning. I think he's undercutting that and satirizing it but also living out the in, in the Kirby sense of the beret and the glasses, living out the alternative life and the freedom but actually trying not to be beat necessarily. Okay, I promise not to say anything because we're going to go around. Lily? Um, I guess in the spirit of undercutting some of what is stereotypical about beats, maybe it's important, um, my point was about not doing, starting with a symbolic reading. I think um, especially the most difficult word for that is um, the darkness surrounds us. I think like that's a, an interesting point to try and first resist a symbolic reading because that can be filled with so many things and like push yourself to imagine this as an actual conversation or like one man talking at another man <laughs> um, taking place in a real life car and like then use that picturing the scenario to work your way through the poem. Yeah, and the darkness surrounds us because they're driving at night. Um, Mary, quickly? Um, I think this speaks also my question about line breaks speaks also to narrative to a certain extent and and to the beats question because it turns out it is one long sentence mm. and we pause at certain places because we're used to reading left to right and then we have to drop our eyes down so we're swerving mm. as as so it's the poem is in acting these, nice. these the striving. We learned a lot from William Carlos Williams whose lines depended from each other as in dependent as in pendant as in Calder, right? And he, Creeley, is really living out the promise of the lineation of Williams, which Williams didn't live out even though he talked about it a lot. So, and I think you have to be a truly alternative lifestyle character like Creeley, which Williams wasn't, <coughs> it wouldn't really push. So that's a very cool, almost so sociological statement, interestingly enough. Carlos, quickly, a follow-up to your own point. Yeah, so I'm wondering if the shortening of said and your sort of uh, mirrors how Creeley has um, condensed uh, two of the central tenets of the beats, uh, saying, talking, and then also uh, the self, um, getting at the self, getting at your own voice. Mm. And so his poem is real short, it's condensed, um, and then so are those two central tenets, said uh, and your but I mean they also aren't because he comments on a lot. Good. Cool, Carlos. Thank you. Erica, quickly? Um, to follow up on the line break question, what I'm thinking about after reading this out loud is that there's so little that you can actually grip onto in this poem. Everything is so abstract and undoing itself, like the name John, which wasn't his name, that the line breaks are really what keeps you in the poem. Very cool. Thank you so much. Emily? Um, yeah, uh, when I said narrative, I was thinking about how effective that car is in the last last stanza of this poem. Um, I don't really think of beat poems or necessarily sort of modern poems having turns the way that sonnets do, but the way that car used really gives it a, a type of rhetorical turn that's almost Dickinsonian and really wonderful. Nice. I love how Dickinson gets in there. Max? Yeah. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, yeah, I think that this sort of shorthanding of uh, of said just said the, the the choice of said of speech of saying is is key, I think, and it sort of calls attention to the to the compressedness of the poem in general, but also seems to want to say something about about speech too. And I think this poem is to go to to Jason's question: Why is this poem included in the beats? Uh, it is a kind of interesting choice given how much like. The, like Ginsburg um, and Kerouac, for instance, are all about like it's almost like diarrhea, like explosions of speech, right? This kind of like, blah, blah blah, and then you get Creeley here, who's all about like saying is this this very terse, compressed thing. Even the word said can't even be said entirely. Thank you, Max. Molly, last word on this poem. Uh, well, I think the title speaks to the question of narrative. That there's this perpetual um, sort of 
storytelling state of mind the beats are always in. I know a guy, this happened and this thing, but then I'm thinking this about it and it's sort of, um, it still maintains that, that diarrhea-like quality as Max put it. It's just a lot briefer yeah. in Creole's game. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. And Lily, thank you for picking this poem. Sure. Can you conclude by very, very briefly just saying why? Why? I know you also wanted the Baraka poem, but yeah. why this? Why does it continue to fascinate us, this poem? Um, it just says a lot in very little space, which is unusual in this week um, <laughs> because the beats tend to take a more m maximal approach that I guess follows from first thought, best thought, um, and riffing and all those things. So. I think for that reason, context has a lot to do with it, but it is so sparse and so um, full of such interesting enjambment and line breaks, like Erica was saying, that um, it seems I, you, like you, you know it's trying to say something and you're not quite always sure what, um, so it's interesting in that way.